like to get started. Good evening. I want to welcome everybody here. If I would ask the opening meeting to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I really want to take this opportunity on behalf of the board to thank all our volunteers sitting here that work so hard to keep our town going. I just can't appreciate our thanks to all of you. If you have anybody else that you think that might would like to help us, please feel free to have them see Suzanne. We can sat on that also. Thank you. John, I'll let you take over the introduction for the town. Your attorney, please. Yes. Um, as many of you know, Jay Whitelaw has retired. She's still cleaning up a few matters, but she uh, she's uh, retiring from the firm. And the firm went out and hired Carrie Ann Roman uh, from another uh, agency. Uh, we're gonna, uh, Carrie Ann, I handed out a copy of her, uh, her resume um, and some of the things that she has done. She's an expert, especially in uh, planning board law and, uh, and land use law. Uh, but can help in all areas of municipal government. Um, one of the things that uh, I know that uh, the Chairman George is particularly interested in is the right to know law, including posting of committees, uh, commission minutes, meetings, um, and there is a, uh, in the handout that I was giving out, there's a few more up here if you want, um, there is a brief summary of land use uh, law that she um, did, which you can look at, and um, uh, and, and go over. But basically, uh, it talks about uh, we need to make sure that minutes, that meetings are properly posted, and that minutes are properly kept, and that they are properly posted. And I, I just, with the chairman's um, permission, I'd like to have her come up and maybe say a few words and. Um, yes. Talk a little about that. Watch all the courts. <laughs> so again, I'm Carrie Rowan. Is that better? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I just joined Mitchell Municipal, but I came from Evan Woodsum and prior to that, Don Tucker and Shandella. I've been doing municipal law for about 10 years, focusing. Uh, most of my time on land use, but doing all aspects of municipal law. And so um, to speak specifically to minutes, I just wanted to mention one thing as opposed to going through the handout you already have. I wanted to point out one thing that I think a lot of boards are surprised about. And I actually just had a meeting with the zoning board that were surprised to hear it. A lot of boards like to do draft minutes. And then at their next meeting, they review those draft minutes and approve them. And then they're posted for the public. Technically, that violates the right to know law. And a lot of towns and a lot of boards do it. I'd say probably the majority of boards do it. So I try and fix that whenever I meet with towns. You, under the right to know law, every um, minutes taken uh, at a public or non-public meeting, you know the non-public can be sealed. And I'll go over that in a minute because that sometimes can be tricky as well about sealing and unsealing non-public minutes. But if they're not sealed, within five days, minutes have to be available to the public. And um, if you have a policy where you do draft minutes, see draft and finalized minutes are not required by the law, but most towns do them. So if you have, if your board does draft minutes that you then later approve, what, um, what you should do and what's required is that within five days you make available to the public minutes and you can write on them, not final or draft, kind of in a watermark, and then, but they have to be available even if they're in draft form, five days. And the other piece of that is if you have a town website, which you do, it has to be up on the website within five days, the draft minutes. Now that's, um, 
for some towns ridiculous and impossible to do. So the other option is just to have a disclaimer on the website. And I hadn't looked, John, but you might have this that says um, minutes are available at the town at the town hall. You can say where they're available, but it has to be on the website. That statement. Um, and then on non-public meeting minutes. So there's very common practice of sealing minutes, particularly for the select board. This doesn't really apply at all to um, to planning boards and zoning boards so much, but the select board. When you seal minutes, you have to make sure that the reason for sealing them is done in public session. So you have to cite the reason for sealing them when you come out of non-public and take that vote out of non-public. And there are only three reasons to seal minutes for longer than 72 hours. Um, a lot of towns will seal them indefinitely or to a date later to determine. You really have to put some sort of end date on that, and it can be until the matter is resolved, until further hearing from council, but it has to be some sort of reason given um, in order to avoid any issue with right to know law. So that's my little primer other than what I've written down about the right to know law. John, I don't know if you want me to take any specific questions. Yeah, does anybody have any questions they'd like to ask on we have her? Review the select board goals we have this year. That also is in the packet that you were picking up that you were looking at. If you turn to the page following, uh, the, the following two pages are about who can call the town attorney, uh, and then the next one, which would be page four in the packet, is goals. on that list that John mentioned. Okay. So the next item is the uh, goals that the board met and uh, we approved a uh, set of goals which was adopted this uh, on the 9th of April. Yes. And, uh, I suppose would you would like me to read them or just the fact that you have them. Do you talk to the microphone please, George? Thank you. 
Is it loud enough? No, just put it to your mouth. How's that? How's that? Much better. Okay. So would you like me to, to read them or is just having the fact you're having them? Is that please? Before we move on to that, I, I just want to back up to one question. You asked if there were any questions about this list of people. So it looks like you've got the chair of the boards there, like for the plan board. You've got uh, Jamie James. James. Yes. Uh, so what if he's unavailable, he's on vacation, can the vice chair then? Ask? We'll take that as a case by case basis. We'll, we can work that out. But this right now is just, just limits it right now. And the answer to your question would probably be yes. Well, but but you, but you have to go through John, so John in turn can let Kerry know that uh, the vice chair of that particular committee is going to be called. Okay. And and, and uh, it would be after a vote by the whole board as to what the question is. In other words, the board defines the question to ask, so that the question is coming from the board. There's a standing legal principle that no one member of any board has any legal authority separate from acting in a in a in a properly called meeting. So that's why the question is generated by the board and then sent up. Now you can also go through Masha. She's on the list. Thank you. Well, seeing as how nobody's here, I guess we'll just say the goals are in your packet. You can read them and I'll move on. I do have a question about that. Please, go ahead. What is an eco park exactly? E eco park is a, uh, uh, down on Route 125, just below Pierce Road, across from where New Plains Road comes off, uh, Liberty Truck. Surrounding Liberty Truck is 120 some acres of town land, and that's what they call eco park. It was given that name because the voters uh, before my time approved doing a, um, a development on there and they wanted it to be um, ecologically friendly and uh, it gave uh, the authority of the board to use it for commercial property and currently we have a company called Hard Rock that's working on a development plan uh, engineering I expect they'll be in front of the planning board and they're working at, at that at that plan right now it's be the board again it would have been about eight years ago made an arrangement with a particular developer but because of the economy and bankruptcy that never occurred um, that one fell through so now we've got another one that's working on it is there a way I can get further details on the, the, the premise of uh, its ecological nature uh, it, it wasn't around eight years ago uh, so my institutional memory is pretty well, I think that, that the warrant article, I can get you a copy of that, and that is, um, I would say, sufficiently vague that there is some question as to what that actually means. That's the title at this point. Yeah. Please, This isn't the final. We can turn around and discuss that. Uh, uh, would you like to have that put under uh, new business? Do you want to go over those again? Because we did approve them on April 9th. And did, oh, did we, uh, do we have to do it tonight? I mean, no, no, we're, we're not going to do it tonight. It's at the next, at the okay. next meeting, yep. May That's 14th. Fine. That's fine. Would you like to be on the agenda for May 14th? Yep. Would you? Yep. Please, Susan, thank you. All right. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Dan. On the Echo Park, when it comes to the plan board, they have all the studies. And then um, uh, we have a checklist. They will meet, meet all the criteria. We need to get all the answers in. Right now, they're still in the process of developing that plan. We will get everything. Thank you. 
Moving on, the next item is going to be the discussion of long range planning for the infrastructure CIP under the uh, discussion by the planning board. So, if you want to get started on that. We, we have the uh, we have we have the draft list here for all these in the handouts it's here and this is part of what we're going to be using tonight as each uh, uh, a board or commission comes forward to discuss things we're going to make changes to it and I hope that, uh, that uh, we can turn around and uh, Jamie if you if you need to take notes or anything like that we can make sure they get to you and we can get this added or we can get them to Marsha so Marsha can have also. Well, one of, the, one of the goals that the selectmen set was, uh, and I'll back up and read it, was uh, using existing documents, review and recommend long-term plan for space needs for all town functions, including recreation, library, fire, police, public works, and town office functions. That is a subset of what the CIP is doing. The CIP is also involved with bridges and uh, with uh, machinery and other items. But part of this is trying to come up with a plan related to the space needs of the various departments. Um, this CIP is the items that have been proposed by various departments. Uh, as written, it's probably unworkable. It's probably not going to happen. But it is a planning document, and one of the goals is to make sure we try to get all of the items that need to be done on here and some idea of how they're going to be funded, as well as then working out some plan as to order and when they're going to occur. I think, I don't know, if Jamie uh, on the planning board has more you want to say on that. I mean, I know it's in front of the board for consideration and it has been for a while, but it keeps getting bumped. Um, Excuse me. Go ahead, Jamie. I, I, I don't have anything to add. Um, some, of the <coughs> some of the numbers we look at, we don't understand why or where they're coming from, um, so we've asked for more information. I think that's been coming in um, and, <coughs> and really kind of where we're at, just assessing it as it comes in. One of, one of the items that was brought to my attention and uh, we've implemented is the fact that this is a draft document. So if anybody's looking at it, just remember it's there, it's available to be changed, and uh, that's what we have. Okay. Any more questions on that? Well, now we come to the Talk about we're here, and again, I can't stress enough. I'm, I'm really appreciative of everybody that's here. Uh, they've worked with us, and we're ready to work with everybody here. So, thank you very much. The first one is going to be the advisory budget committee. Who's representing the advisory? Peter, you want to come to the microphone, please? of the budget committee for a number of years now. Um, reminder to the board, currently, other than Chairman Bailey, there's no one who's been uh, sworn in uh, to be current on the budget committee. We desperately need members. Uh, the ABB had um, publicized our deed and uh, given my name for persons interested. Uh, we really need to get people so that we can assure we have a quorum when we meet. Um, we're supposed to be five members, and it's very hard to get a quorum. But I know part of uh, what I was supposed to do was talk about what our mission is, and we try to review budgets and revenues, and um, put our evaluation into the thought process for the board. Um, and I think we've been fairly successful at that. Uh, of course, no one ever achieves 100% success, so we understand <coughs> that. But um, I'm a believer the more opinions, the better, uh, the better the outcome. And uh, so I think it's a very important process, and I've kind of hung on um, with the idea I want to try my best that we have a quorum. Um, my term supposedly expired in 17, 
so here I am, once again, in the team. team. But um, that's okay, but we really need some membership, and I think the board has to uh, do their best to address that. Yes. I have a young lady in there. I'll give her my email or phone number. And I'm not around the phone, much, so that's a problem, but email probably would be better. Um, and I can give that to you if you don't have it. It's uh, Peter Duckworth. <coughs> at iCloud.com. I had a person who contacted me from the uh, ABB publication, and uh, I was hopeful that he was going to uh, jump in, but uh, I'm going to prompt him again to see if he's not interested or might still be interested. But again, uh, getting some membership is certainly important. And I'm not sure, John, whether we're allowed to have alternates or if somebody's interested beyond our capacity, can we simply invite them to attend and participate? Or that, that's really a question for Gary, but there you go. How many members do you have at Philly Five. No, but how many do you actually have? Well, we have four. <laughs> we have Chairman Bailey, <laughs> and everyone else is carried forward from terms that have expired. There's three carried forward, so there's four. correct one. And your question is whether or not you have to have an appointment. You can't just have people come. No, that's what I mean is could we designate the board to have alternates so that if somebody isn't there, can we have someone fill in? Yes. Thanks. Do you have any idea what that number would be, Carrie? Yeah, right. oh. Mr. Mr. Backman, just Do you have any idea how many that would be? Uh, no, I don't. Oh, I think, okay. We're, we're, where it's an advisory committee is probably different than some of the statutory. Oh, I'm committees. sorry, I misunderstood. Yeah, this is advisory. I'm sorry, I should have said. Yes. Advisory to the board of select. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Then the select board has the authority to designate that it can have alternates okay. and how many, since it's an advisory committee. To yeah. do. Since we don't have our five, it's probably <laughs> beyond what we need to worry about right now. So we can work with the board on that. It'd be nice to have more. Indeed. <coughs> Most of the boards are, are acting in a public capacity. The meetings are public. Are you saying that the advisory budget mm -hmm. committee is not a public meeting, as in no one from the public can just show up? It is public. They they know it is public. Know. We, we post our meetings, and okay. um, so I'm yeah. foolish enough to be the chair and the secretary, so we do minutes and <laughs> get all that stuff covered. Life gets better after 50. You, you read it well. <laughs> Even better beyond that after 55, George. I didn't want a chance to make a <laughs> Yeah, so we do that, and um, I submit those minutes to John and to uh, the town clerk. And um, again, it's always a draft, which uh, I'll have to check with Kim when she actually releases those. But uh, based on the information from the attorney, We'll make sure they get released as a draft, and then we approve them at our next meeting. Thank you, Peter. Okay. Thank you very much. Next is the uh, select board. As you know, we voted at our last meeting to have some changes. We are now known as the select board. And, yeah. Thank you very much for saying yes, whoever that was. I appreciate that. <laughs> and uh, also that uh, the members will be called select person. And uh, just to bring you up the data on that. And I've already spoken on the draft minutes. I've spoken, uh, CIP was covered. So moving on would be the cemetery trustees, uh, Rick Walker, or his rep there. Okay. Cemetery trustees are a three-person elected board, one one for a three-year term, so uh, we rotate every. Put uh, that mic up. Oh, right. Three uh, three member uh, board of trustees are one member elected every year for a three-year term, so that every every year there's a, a new uh, position elected. Uh, our primary function is to oversee the uh, town cemetery and the uh, various uh, burial 
yards around town, private burial grounds around town. Um, we operate on a modest uh, budget of around $17,000 a year, which is uh, the majority of it is used for uh, the uh, maintenance, mowing, and, and fertilizing, and uh, pest control, and then uh, the, the, the balance is used for uh, any, any repairs. We, we, <coughs> we uh, typically meet uh, once or twice a year. Uh, typically in the spring around this time we'll get together and uh, elect the chairperson and uh, we post the um, meeting. Um, we elect the chairperson and go over our goals for the current year. Um, our short term goals are to do some maintenance. Uh, in the last few years I think you'll notice we've uh, didn't got the fence out in front taken care of, replaced the picket fence over a couple of years with the help of the uh, school department facilities. Uh, that's been taken care of. We need to uh, do some work on the two buildings on the property, and there's always ongoing maintenance of uh, graves that are sinking and uh, leveling and seeding and that type of thing. Uh, the trustees have talked a little bit about long-term goals of uh, acquiring more land uh, for the future internment of uh, the, the uh, people that died. Right now, we have uh, we took some trees down in what we call the old section. Um, that in the next few years, we'll work on a plan to get that brought up to uh, uh, spade, speed, get it laid out, get some get roads put in. And then we have a, a pretty good sized section uh, behind the historical society uh, that's not been laid out yet. But um, looking at the Long-term goal is to obviously at some point, probably long after I'm gone, or at least my wife hopes I'll be gone. But then um, <laughs> the uh, the town the town has an obligation to um, provide a, a place to put the remains of their citizens. So um, it, it's always we're always looking at the possibility of where we might acquire land. Uh, so that down the road that's being taken care of. Um, that's pretty much it. Does anybody have any questions? What happens? Anybody? Please. Um, as part of your roles and responsibilities, do you guys, are you responsible to um, take care of the uh, peripheral cemeteries that are out there? I know there's quite a few of them in a small family plots throughout the town that need, I know some of them need some clearing of brush and trees and things like that. Is that along your lines? So that's kind of an ironic. We're, we're responsible for overseeing that, uh, but we there obviously we cannot use town funds to maintain uh, private burial grounds. If the board of selectmen declare a cemetery or burial ground abandoned, then the town's obligated to uh, maintain that burial ground. Hence, we why it's not likely that you'll ever see the Board of Selectmen in any community um, vote to declare a cemetery abandoned. So if, if people were to take it upon themselves to want to clean up the, the burial ground that's uh, next door to their house, there's, a, there's an obligation in which you have to make an effort to find heirs to that. Um, that burial ground and get permission from them. If uh, in the absence of not being able to find an heir, then you're obligated to post a, a three-day ad in the uh, local newspaper uh, saying that you want to go clean that up. If still nobody comes forward, and then at that point you would go to the board of cemetery trustees and the board of selectmen, and they would make the final decision as to whether or not uh, you could, a person could go in and clean up a burial ground. It's important to understand that burial grounds uh, remain the property of the heirs of the people interred there for all of eternity. If you have a burial ground on your property, you don't own that. It just means you're in a bugger on four sides. Uh, and you, there's a legal obligation on your part to allow heirs to that burial ground to cross your property so that they can pay their respects to their family members. In the event that you choose not to allow somebody to cross your property, 
then the board of selectmen have to get involved and they, they determine how that person will get across your property and they determine uh, that that's how it's taken care of. Does the town have an inventory of these private cemeteries? Yeah, as a matter of fact, there's a uh, cemetery history book that's available for sale. Uh, a gentleman back in the uh, early 70s put an inventory together and then in uh, around 1972, uh, Ralph Booty and a number of other people as part of the Bicentennial Project uh, kind of updated and did a lot of work on it. Just, just so you know, there's 102 cemeteries uh, that we have in town that we know of. I said uh, one time we went out and we did uh, flags and people pointed out another one for us that we made note of and gave it to the uh, cemetery commission. Dan, you have a question? Uh, I hope it's too premature. The uh, cemetery is off the way. I don't know what Okay, so the selectman air mentioned the board of selectmen approved a, uh, a software program. Currently, heaven forbid, if something happens to our town hall, all our cemetery records are on a uh, recipe card on a file. Uh, so the uh, selectmen have approved a uh, uh, allowing the trustees to uh, purchase a program in which we will uh, be able to get all of this on computer software so it'll be stored in the cloud, I believe. Um, and it's our hope that once we can get uh, the, uh, with the help of one of the ladies up to the uh, town hall, once we can get it all in place, that if people that are doing genealogy uh, would be able to uh, research family members and, and determine um, where they are. It's our intent to get all of the town cemetery done, and then as trustees, we'll talk about uh, working toward uh, filling in the pieces with this. Like the Bailey said, the other hundred somewhat cemetery. You had more questions? Yep. You Please. Thank you. So you had stated that uh, that those of us who own those or own property abutting those graveyards, which I am one of them, um, we're abutters to that. Yes. Now, when I look at the town maps of my property, it shows the line running directly through the center of it. So. How do I go about ensuring that I'm not getting taxed on that, that which I don't own? Uh, that, that's an assessing question. Okay. I can assure you that um, whoever surveyed did that, did, it, it, it was inadvertently done. Um, I, don't, I don't think other than our town cemetery that graveyards are, are necessarily blocked out, but again, that's probably a question. Some are, but not many. So, and the other thing is important to understand, if you are in a butter to a uh, private burial ground that you cannot excavate within 25 feet of said burial ground. Uh, the reason being is, is if you were the black sheep in the family, which I probably would be, they toss you outside the cemetery. So there's no real way of knowing whether there's people interred outside the cemetery. So uh, they, they 25 feet. Some of the earlier uh, cemeteries that when they buried the individual, the, uh, the slaves, and when they died, the slaves were buried outside and they had that rock, round rock and what have you. So you see a lot of sort of <coughs> cemeteries do have that distinction. There are a lot of beautiful cemeteries in town, uh, many that are well grown over with large trees going up to them, but it just would be cost prohibitive for us to try to clean them up. But if you're uh, ever walking around up the woods, and you come across a uh, grave, a uh, private burial ground, it's amazing some of the stones and stuff that are open. And yeah, there's one that has a stone, the stone is three feet off the off the ground because the tree is wrapped around it and it's lifted right up off. It's one of the ones off of 125. Dan, you had a question? Um, the tax map is not official. There might be a line going through it. That means nothing. Be your deed, it's right to be in your deed. That is, it's outlined. Moving on, John Wallace. Please join us from the uh, Conservation Commission. Thank you, John. Thank you. Um, Conservation Commission, as probably most of you know to some extent, is, is charged with, with overseeing the natural resources of the town, particularly um, with respect to the water, the waterways, the wetlands, things like that. 
Um, our duties include um, reviewing a number of items for the state, wetlands permits come for us. Um, we are strictly an advisory group, so we have no real power. We have a few here and there, I guess, but uh, we can't, uh, mostly we, we have things we want to have done, we come to the selectmen about them. Um, the moment, um, <clears throat> it's a five member board. Uh, right now we only have four full members and three alternates, so we would love to get a full board again, and I'm planning to step down as chair because I've been chair for way too long. Um, so if any of you are interested, I would encourage you to please get hold of me or someone at the town who goes to Marsha and uh, come to a few of our meetings and, and see what we do. Um, in terms of just our immediate efforts that are underway at the moment, uh, I'll mention a few. I was asked to, to speak to a few of them. Um, in terms of the conservation lands in town, which there have been quite a, quite a gain in them in the last uh, 10, 15 years, um, especially with the uh, addition of the Stonehouse Forest last fall. I hope you're all aware of it. If not, you should be. Um, anyway, just a couple things related to the already existing lands. We've been working on getting better public access to them. So we're in the process of um, developing parking areas on a few. On the Caliph property, the A. Harlan Caliph Isinglass Preserve, it's been kind of an ongoing nightmare getting a, getting a parking lot done for that, but I think we're pretty close now. In fact, bids have been coming in to the Conservation Commission to have about a, I believe it's a six space parking lot put out there. Uh, we will be reviewing those bids at our meeting this Thursday. Ideally, we'll go out to contract soon and should be done sometime, I hope, in the next month or two. Um, the other um, access issue has to do with the Goodwill Conservation Area, right along 125, excuse me, along 109 there. Um, known to many people as the place where the Winnie the Pooh Trail is. It's become an exceedingly popular spot. You see cars there all the time, I think. Um, a couple of years ago, I made the mistake of finding out from, from DOT, the Department of Transportation, that the little driveway that goes into there was actually never permitted by the state. I'm sorry I know. Sorry I made that mistake. But uh, anyway, and it turns out um, it is not approvable where it is right now. And this, but the state says if we move it 33 feet further to the west, it'll be okay. So we're in the process now of trying to get that driveway moved, as well as we want that parking area upgraded. It, it's quite a sea of mud around this time of year and many years. And because it's right next to Little Richardson Pond, there we don't want a lot of runoff. <clears throat> Fortunately, um, Jeff Adler of Dubois and King, one of the um, town's engineering firms, actually agreed to donate the engineering and the planning of that parking area. Uh, so at this point, the Conservation Commission has approved getting the surveying done for that work. And I, I know they were out there last week. I'm not quite sure if they finished their work or not, but that's going on. Um, we authorized the money to pay for the surveying to be paid through our conservation fund. Um, and uh, so ideally in the next month or so I will have to have a plan and then we'll have to consider where we can go to actually get it uh, get it done. I'm sure it won't be cheap. It will be a fairly major project. All right, in terms of um, continuing land conservation, um, there are still a few projects we're working on. Uh, one, of the, one of those is the area behind the Goodwill where the Winnie the Pooh Trail is. It would be very nice to have a really continuous, because there are trails out there now. Many of you probably have hiked them, and there, there's some beautiful spots out there. And we're working with the owners, along with the Southeast Land Trust in New Hampshire. They're a major partner in just about all of our land conservation um, actions to try to get that conserved. We have the Haley, prop, Haley owners are, are very willing. They're trying to do it. We're applying for money from the federal government. And we'll see where that goes. Um, and a couple more. One is uh, the property, um, technically it's still the name of Ann Schultz. If you remember, Jim and Ann Schultz were Barrington, spearheads of Barrington Conservation for many, many years in town. Um, they put their land in an easement to most of their land. But they still own one piece. Ann actually died last fall. Um, there's in fact a memorial service for her this coming weekend. But um, anyway, Jim Schultz um, has contacted me that the one piece of land that, that they still have, it's about 45 acres, I believe, um, really highly 
valuable from a conservation point of view. Part of the Barrington Trail runs through it. Anyway, but they're very interested in conserving that. Um, just need a few dollars to sort of pay various expenses on the side. Um, and so we're working on that one. We'll probably call it the Ann Schultz Conservation Area or something like that when it happens, which is only the right thing to do. Um, and there's one other project we're working on, but I'd rather not talk about that one in public because there's still some issues related to privacy on that one. Um, just another thing that, that we're presently working on is um, updating our natural resources inventory. One of the things that the Conservation Commission is charged with doing is producing a natural resource inventory of the town. We had one done about 10, 12 years ago. Um, with a lot of help from the Stratford Regional Planning Commission, um, and they'll be working on it again. Um, it's just a list of the conservation values of the town, maps, lots of maps showing where the wetlands are, where this, that, and the other thing are. But it's in need of updating, it's especially with respect to the conservation land that's out there and some of the statewide or regional conservation plans that have come into play since then. It, it's out of date, so that's going to be updated. Um, I hope soon. We're looking to hoping to get some funding to help with that as well. Um, just one other thing I can mention that's going on, it's in conjunction with the planning board. Um, there's a joint committee been formed between members of the Conservation Commission and of the planning board to produce a new wetlands buffer ordinance that will be, I expect, come before the voters next year that will, um, that will dictate the um, how much of a buffer to a wetland is required based on its functions and values. You know, not all wetlands are created the same. I'm sure we all appreciate that. Some have very little value. There's not a whole lot of need for a buffer. Others have huge value. And so the buffer should be more than the standard 50 feet that, uh, that the town requires right now. So we're glad to be working in conjunction with the planning board on that. And as I said, I hope something will be coming before the voters next fall. Uh, a very active group is our Trails Committee, which is a subcommittee of the Conservation Commission. Um, they're doing lots of work on the trails on many of the conserved lands around town. Um, we lead hikes generally once a month. Um, just a little uh, publicity. There will be a bird walk this coming Saturday, 7 in the morning over on the Brazen Hill Farm, what used to be the Warren Farm out there. Um, Contact me if you want to come. We just try to get registrations for that. The following weekend, um, I'll be leading what we call our weekend walkabouts. We just do kind of a monthly informal hike. Um, and we'll do that on the Stephen Jeffrey Conservation Easement. Um, oh, and finally, um, the Trails Committee is in the process of producing a trails booklet for town with maps and descriptions of all the trails. Some of these are in. in crude form on our website, but uh, it's long been needed. Jim Schultz, whom I mentioned earlier, produced one about 10, 12 years ago that was very nice, but it's woefully out of date. He didn't have any maps, so I know I've been promising this for a long time, but I really think we're going to get there in the next several months and get something, something done. So that's all I have to say up front. I'm happy to take any questions. Board members, any questions? Any questions from the audience, please? Is there any discussion about um, the types of, um, I guess there are easements that uh, developers give to have cluster development in town? Um, I'm very disappointed with most of what we get is swamp or grade such that they couldn't build on it anyway. Um, is there any change proposed that's going to say we need to get some property that could, could be developed? Well, I believe for them the, impacting their development. I, I believe the ordinance, and Marsha would know this better than I, um, or, or um, someone would, um, does require that I believe at least 50% of land that becomes conservation land as a result of a conservation development uh, cannot be wetland, cannot have steep slopes. I don't remember all the details. So at least in theory, a good portion of that land is still developable. We, of course, push when one of these is coming up for the very first thing that they should do, uh, that the developer should do, is look at the conservation values of the land, often, which are often around the wetlands, are often the most valuable in terms of, of, um, of conservation. 
and, and come up with a plan that specifically protects those and then work the houses around that rather than trying to squeeze as many houses in and saying whatever's left over we'll put in conservation. But uh, Marsha wants to speak to this. Is, John, does that include open space? Yeah, that, that's what we're talking about. Oh, the okay. open space associated. Yeah, I just want to get that word in. Thank you. So one of the things that happened about five years ago in regard to conservation subdivisions, they used to get bonuses for getting it, doing a conservation subdivision. That no longer exists. They have to show and pay basically pass the straight face test that say they're going to get 20 lots, that they could actually get 20 lots. What they then do is condense those 20 lots onto a, into a smaller area so that the remaining lot, uh, remaining area which has higher value is conserved. So they don't get any additional lots. The idea is not to eliminate lots, that's not the point of a conservation subdivision, it's to cluster them so that the higher value from a conservation standpoint is um, protected. So yes, a lot of times some of that area will be wetlands because wetlands are actually considered high value. Um, just, just so everyone's clear that we did eliminate, the board did eliminate um, through the voters the bonus portion of a, a conservation subdivision. Any other questions? Thank you, John. Thank you, Masha. Moving on, we have the library. Please. I'm sorry. That, that is Lindsay, for those of you who don't know Lindsay. Hi, everyone. Yeah. I'm Lindsay Maziars. Um, <coughs> can you hear me? Is this good? I'm the chair of the library trustees. The trustees are the governing body of the library. We have monthly meetings on the third Tuesday of the month at 6 p.m., always <coughs> open to the public. As you all know, we recently hired a new director, Melissa, in her orange sweater. Um, she joined us in March and has been doing a wonderful job. I wanted to make sure everyone knew of a new addition that we put onto the website that would be really helpful for folks. Um, it's called the Community Spotlight section. and you can submit to be a part of that. Uh, it helps with uh, folks that are already navigating the website to see other town events and other groups that they may be interested in. Uh, so far, the Barrington Bloomers, the American Legion, and a few others have submitted information. If you go to the website, you go to the catalog button, and it's on the right of the page, you, you can't miss it. And there's instructions on how to um, get your information up on the website. The Barrington Public Library is it's a busy place, and it seems to only be getting busier. We have noticed a steady increase in programming attendance and continue to try to support the staff in being able to offer the programming that the residents of our town desires. Another trend that we've noticed is the increase in need for online digital services. So adapting with the times, we've expanded the services this year to continue to meet the needs of the town residents um, with a digital service called Hoopla. Um, some of you may know about that. Uh, if you don't check it out with the website uh, through the website or at the library uh, the staff has reported seeing a spike in retired community members using our library the staff say that folks are more retirees are coming in through the door looking for tech support programming and activities as well as a national trend that is also being applied here in Barrington the need for the stem programming so the staff person let us uh, use one of their quotes about the young girls in, in our community here in Barrington that he says over the years I've had hundreds of patrons for technology appointments or as students in after-school STEM programs I remember when I first started the STEM program curiosity unleashed it was filled with young boys the next year I had young female I'm um, sorry several girls join the group because they heard how awesome it was one of the young female coders remarks to her mother mom I love coding now to have a student say that is great but to have a young girl say that is astounding the gender gap between men and women in technology field is still large, though it is shrinking. We've noticed that when we run STEM or STEAM programs here at the library through, um, or through the middle school programs, we're seeing more and more young female coders <coughs> or engineers taking part. And the fact that we're able to introduce these concepts to young girls who may not have this exposure anywhere else is just one good example of um, why we're here. So with that said, I'd like to introduce Tracy Bisson, um, who is a trustee as well as the chair of the Barrington Library Foundation.
So you've probably all heard of the Friends of the Library. They're um, a fundraising and outreach arm of the library. Um, and then we have our trustees. And now we have a foundation, which is now been created as a 501c3. And it's the large fundraising arm of the library to help meet our goals, which Tracy will speak about a little bit, um, here in Barrington. Lindsay, just to yeah. make you have a question. Andrew. Sure. <clears throat> Sorry. I don't know if everybody knows what STEM is. So I, I knew you were going to ask me that. Science, science, science technology, engineering, math. 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 They all knew. They 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 do you prefer if I About the foundation tonight and this really is an abbreviated version of a longer presentation that we have that some people here have seen including uh, the select board members but for the purposes of the allotted time frame tonight and in regard to some specific questions that administrator Scruton has asked I am focusing this on some key points so we want to talk about the impact on the rec fields tonight uh, space for a town hall in regards to the um, new library plan and what the latest cost estimate is and I'll give you some information at the end for anybody who hasn't seen the large presentation and wants to see it um, we do offer presentations at any time so I will give you that information so basically we wanted to find the best design for our community and uh, just a little bit of history here in the 90s a needs assessment was done and was conducted by a library consultant who was hired uh, named patient Jackson and at that time based on her study of the population growth in Barrington it was suggested that the library be 17,000 square feet so as time passed we decided we wanted something that was more affordable more efficient and a more community focus uh, hence the design that you're going to see today the current size was scaled down to 12,300 square feet plus 3,500 square feet on a lower level uh, for storage and rec area, which I'll explain in more detail. So in the fall of 2016, the uh, current foundation uh, conducted a feasibility study with a new fundraising consultant that we hired, uh, paid with private money. And what we found from the uh, study participants is that uh, the, the layout of this new library was very enticing to them. Uh, they loved the whole community gathering focus of this new plan. Uh, they were very favorable, uh, had a very favorable response to the current scaled down kind of open air concept uh, version that you're going to see here. And just as a side note too, in case you're not aware, um, some information we found out from the New Hampshire Office of Energy and Planning anticipates that our population will grow to more than 10,000 within the next seven to eight years, so by 2025, so just something to keep in mind. So here's another view too, so I'm going to go back here. So this just gives you a look here on the board and up above the front of the library with a porch, access from the parking lots to the field, which you'll see here, a lower and an upper parking lot, just some different versions of it. 
This here is the lower level that was mentioned that would be occupied by the rec. So there would be bathrooms down here and there would be sports storage for their outdoor gear, their big slides, uh, the activity um, toys and different uh, paraphernalia that they use. And there would also be bathrooms in there so that the summer camp kids no longer would need to use the uh, outdoor potties, um, which is yeah, not preferable if you've ever used one of those before. <laughs> Uh, and then again, easy access from the parking lot um, and uh, where other current parking lot is, which you'll see on a bigger site plan. Just another look at the uh, parking, again, to accommodate. Actually, let me go back one more because I really wanted to focus on this too. So here is the community, the highly anticipated community space that everybody talks about meeting in Barrington. We really want it to be in the library, which is all, already a gathering space already. The, the library is already sprinkled, so why not have the meeting space for everyone in the community to be able to use? It can be used after hours. It has a entrance that is separate from the main library. Um, people can hold keys to that. It's, it's um, secured off from the library. Has access to a, a small kitchen with catering opportunities. Uh, it's uh, 100 seats, but it can be divided in half and hold two programs at one time, uh, 50 and 50. So. Okay. So I want to talk a little bit about the impact on the rec fields because one of the uh, questions that we received was uh, from Tara was she wanted a better understanding of how the fields were impacted. So when we went back to SMP architecture, uh, I wanted to get a better sense of uh, the impact. And the septic, so let me show you another. This will help as I go through the slides. Can everybody see this? Can you see this over here? Let me slide it over. I still need the display. All right, so this area here is where the septic will be. These are the rec fields. And based on what SMP tells us, it says, uh, he says, um, Jason, who's the owner and our contact, says that the impact on the rec fields will be minimal based on the design from the town hall project and there is a potential increase in usable area fields, the area that is directly in front of the lower level. So basically this area here will all be opening up for the rec and there will be a little bit of an adjustment to a slope that's over here. But it's our understanding from SMP that um, the, the rec will benefit favorably from the changes in the field. So, and again, what, what is important to consider with this whole project is this is a, what uh, Jason calls a good draft. It is, you know, ever-changing and ever-evolving based on community needs and stakeholders' needs. So that's an ongoing dis discussions with our stakeholders. Okay, so this shows it a little bit larger here. So again, that's where the uh, septic is there. So now what I want to show you here is just... The, the whole site plan, this was actually designed in October of 2016. And the reason I want to show this here is because of the deliberative session, there was some misinformation that was given in regards to the original plan. Uh, uh, there were a few select board members that mentioned that there was no place for a town hall. There was always space for a town hall from day one. And you can see that this space is here. So originally how it was laid out, this was where the library was supposed to be. The town hall was supposed to be here. In May of 2016, we approached the select board and asked them to vote in favor of allowing us to have the better spot because we needed a larger building. And they did uh, agree unanimously. So we changed the footprints and came up here on the higher level. And they were down, uh, the new um, potential building is down here. This is at about 8,200 square feet here also with a lower level like we're proposing in the library. So, uh, you know, definitely bigger than the, the TD Bank space that they were currently looking at. Lots of room for expansion. Um, pretty much whatever, you know, we want to be to have done there. Uh, a couple things to see here, too. 
plenty of parking. There's an upper parking lot here, the lower parking lot here that I showed you in the other picture. And then there could be potentially a third parking lot here that could go with the town hall for a total of 71 spaces. So we feel that's plenty of room for even if uh, the, the meeting room of 100 spots was completely filled. And so, uh, also, like I said, this is 8,200 square feet uh, imprint, but underneath the lower level is an additional 2,800 square feet for storage. So here's another look from uh, Google Earth. Again, this would be the space here where the other building could go. And then the uh, parking lot would be here, which would have access from Route 9. Now what I want you to see here is basically the kind of collaborative campus feel of this project. So you've got the ECLC here, which still to this point uses the library for the kids because they don't have the library. So the kids are trooping over, you know, through the back area, through a path where it's safe, not through the parking lots, and they still need to access the library. Uh, this is currently where the library is. It's our anticipated goal for the, the rec department. Um, uh, you know, through conversations with the select board, that they would be able to take over this entire building, food pantries down here. Um, I know they're doing a needs assessment um, right now, which I'm sure you'll hear from Tara in regards to what they're learning. So then you've got the playground here, which I know um, there's a new one coming. Uh, recreation fields here for summer camp. Then again, the new proposed library here with a nice porch that you could be sitting, drinking your coffee from the cafe, or looking at the playground, watching your kids have a great time. So again, a whole community gathering place, which is the number one thing that we have heard from the information sessions we've been conducting, from the feasibility study participants, basically from anybody we present to, that is the biggest thing they are sold on, is they want to understand how this will benefit the community for everyone to come together. And that is our biggest goal in uh, putting this all together. Also, I know from my experience, from my kids being in the rec program in, in the summer camp, if it rains, if there's a thunderstorm, if it's 95 plus degree weather, they have to be shuttled over to the gym, which is hot. There's no AC. It's stifling. So now they could have this fantastic meeting room space where they can have AC and they can run their programs up there and probably even have more space than what the rec potentially would offer, at least for comfortable seating. So another option for the rec to be able to use that to their benefit. Just a quick look inside for anyone who hasn't seen it yet. Again, this is that open air concept that I was uh, talking about. It's, you know, original design had rooms. You know, go in this room, get your book. You know, there's walls, you're kind of enclosed. But we didn't want that. Again, we wanted the community feel. We wanted people to feel like they could gather and see their friends and how are you. Um, you know, just a quick tour around here, a craft room, oops, craft room, maker space, essentially like the meeting space that is in the library right now, but solely dedicated to, uh, to, to being a maker space. <coughs> We've got a little family restroom here, the children's librarian would be here, uh, additional seating area here, and all the children's stacks, additional seating here, again, these are all windows, very bright and open and airy. More seating area here, you've got the juvenile area, now you have a teen space where, again, they can all come together and gather. The adult wing, many stacks, many seating areas, a conference table here, more seating area, a fantastic cafe where people can gather. Um, just the whole concept is about gathering and getting together. I mean, you won't see any little um, computer kiosks here because the whole thought process is that you would check out a laptop, Go and sit in the cafe with your friends. Go and sit in one of the seating areas, do your work. Again, we want to bring people together. We don't want to separate them. Uh, some study rooms here could be used by business people, could be used for test taking, uh, could be used for conducting a job interview. Local history room where we can really show the proud history and heritage of Barrington. Storage closet right now, if anybody has seen the pictures, the, uh, the AV, um, and all the tech is in the back of Melissa's office. Her head is right at her head. It's pretty hot and <laughs> uncomfortable. So we want to give some space to that. Covered porch, again, for people to gather. Patio for people to gather. Huge function room. Um, just lots of fantastic gathering opportunities. And the biggest thing is it will be ADA compliant. 
very key. So let's look at a timeline and how long we expect this to all come together. So this year, 2018, we're doing several things, uh, fundraising, community outreach, uh, get out the vote, uh, conversations with stakeholders, and informational meetings, public sessions um, are continuing through the fall and through the winter. So then as we move into 2019, we want to get the ball started uh, quickly. We do anticipate it being favorable, uh, getting a favorable response on the warrant article. So in January, we'll start out by uh, uh, with a construction manager selection process. We'll draft agreements with SMP and select the CM uh, provided to town for review. And the intent is to have all these agreements ready to go uh, for, as the vote passes in March. Then uh, March through August, we move into final design, engineering, and permitting. Um, and we would not break ground until summer camp is done. So that would be, uh, so we bid the project around August, September, and then we'd uh, look to break ground in late September. Uh, and then 2020 in the summer, we expect to have a grand opening and community celebration. So what is this going to cost? So the anticipated cost for the construction is just over $4 million. Soft costs, uh, which could include things like non-construction related expenses, so architecture, engineering, insurance, owner's contingencies, things like that, are, are estimated roughly now at uh, $822,405. FFE costs, which are furniture, fixtures, and equipment costs, so uh, non-construction related things, operation items, um, library stacks, furnishings, security systems, phones, computers, things like that. That is estimated right now at $267,500. Uh, with a successful fundraising goal of half a million, our anticipated warrant article would be just over 4.6. Now these costs assume that we would be uh, breaking ground, as I mentioned, at the end of the summer of 2019, and we would be using the existing site engineering plan from the town office that was created originally. Uh, a couple uh, additional bits of information too. The estimated square foot uh, cost of this project is $256 a square foot. And just to compare that, for instance, to the Durham Library, if that was built uh, uh, under today's cost, that would be $275, uh, $275 a square foot, just for comparison's sake. So we're finding that costs are uh, rising rapidly, primarily due to uh, contractor availability and the cost of steel. So something to consider for any other uh, towns that will be bringing a warrant article for, for construction uh, in 2019 or 2020. The costs here in the construction also do uh, include an overbuild for the septic for the future need of that second building as I mentioned down here. So we are taking those things into consideration. And even though construction costs are rising, and I know people are worried that they're rising really quickly, um, SMP uh, does believe that this total budget is realistic, and we have uh, put into contingent or have put um, some healthy contingencies into place just to make sure that we don't have to bring more of a warrant article to the town than is necessary. So just to break that down and cut into kind of a visual. Um, measure for you the anticipated cost to the taxpayers if you own a home at a value of three hundred thousand dollars would roughly be a, a cup of aroma joe's coffee each week so where are we with our fundraising goal well i am very happy to say that we are almost halfway there we are at two hundred thirty three thousand seven hundred seventy four dollars and the most aggressive effort for this fundraising started in january so we've come a long way in a very short period of time. Also, it's very key to point out that obviously we went back to the heart of this leadership team, which is the foundation uh, board and the trustees. And I'm really proud to say that we have 100% giving from those two groups, which is very important because I would be up here preaching to you to support this project if we didn't support this project. And we do wholeheartedly. So for final thoughts, a couple things I want to mention. So uh, for people who don't know, the middle school bond will be paid off in October of 2022. That was a $15 million bond. Uh, we, are, we have ongoing meetings with future stakeholders. Uh, we, we have them going now, and we will have them until this warrant article passes. 
Uh, the full presentation, as I mentioned, is an abbreviated version, is available to all departments. We're happy to come and um, give you our dog and pony show, if you will have the time for us. It's about 45 minutes long, depending on how much uh, Q&A there is. Uh, contrary to what you might hear outside of what the foundation would tell you, please know that the foundation is the source for all information. If you hear anything that is different from what you hear here, please come to the foundation. My contact information is here. Or if I can have all members that are associated with the library, please stand up. These are all people that you can come to who will have the correct answers. If you hear anything to the contrary, please. We have a big support group. Uh, website to be launched very soon that will be uh, keeping the community apprised of our prog progress. And if you would like to donate, pause. Or if you have questions, <laughs> feel free to contact anybody who was standing up or me at that information there. And also, another thing that I wanted to mention uh, in regards to uh, future meetings with stakeholders, the uh, foundation and the trustees will also be holding additional meetings with the select board so that we can better take into consideration the needs of their future town hall and how we can all work together to collaborate and with the community to you know, get the the best efficient uh, worn article presented to the community. So thank you very much. Thank you, Tracy. Anybody have any questions, please? Tracy? Yes. The other Tracy. Oh, the other Tracy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Tracy. Uh, if people choose to donate, Tracy, does it have to be a one-time donation, or could it be something that they do over a period? Thank you. That's a great question. No, it can be a one-time donation, or you can make a pledge over three years. Uh, it can be cash, credit card, checks, security bonds, life insurance. There is a number of ways that we can help you um, to donate. And then I have one quick question. If you can go back a few slides and show us where the um, not yet proposed but needed town hall might be. <coughs> oh, there. Yeah. Uh, that's, yeah, great. Okay. Can you show me on the library where the rec department's area is, just so I'm understanding, because I thought it was... Yeah, let me give you another picture, actually. Okay, so right here. Is that the back and the front? This is the... So you see here? So this is um, Ramsdale. Yes. And this is the uh, parking lot, and this would be the entrance here. So we've got a, a walkway that comes down past the porch. Okay, so walkway here from this parking lot. facing the room. Correct. It faces okay. here and it has um, like premier access to the. That's super helpful. I yep. thought it was exactly the opposite of that. Oh, okay. So thank you. Perfect. Do you select person down. Uh, Five years. Yeah. So you will do a joint venture on town hall. We would like to discuss it. I think it makes sense for the community people. Uh, if it can work, great. If it can't, I mean the library is still going to move ahead. I think what's important is it can't be an all or nothing. If for some reason the community won't support all buildings being built at the same time, we have to be able to give them the option of choosing, which, you know, because we well, want... Look at your timeline and the septic. The half I asked was one. Right, it's being overbuilt to accommodate this building. So that's already included in our budget. So that when this building were to go in, they just have to tap into it. Any more questions from the audience? John? Oh, I'm sorry, were you supposed to call? It's all right, you're doing it. You're doing it. You're doing it. You're doing it. I'll save my breath for later. Tracy, can you speak to the sustainable design and energy efficiency, et cetera? Of the uh, John, I, I would really like to move this along when it comes to the construction of the pots that are in there. So, I mean, she made a good presentation. We cut it, she cut it down from 45 minutes to, well, close enough. But I'd like to do that if we could, please. We have other people we got to move on with, please. Any other questions? I was just wondering, um, how, um, compared to our current library, how much bigger is this structure? The current library is 3,700 square feet. Yeah. This is uh, 12 3 on the usable space, and the area where the rec would be and the storage area is another 3,500. <laughs> Roughly. This becomes a town asset, right? Correct. So if you guys looked at that, maybe go to what John said, and maybe you don't have the answer, but I was just wondering, therefore, have you looked at the, um, what the um, I'm just curious, annual um, costs are going to be for heating, air conditioning? Is that going to be 
which is the annual cost associated to maintain. I don't have that with me, but yes, our architecture. Maybe because I'm curious down the road, you know, say yep. you know, we used to pay fifty thousand dollars a year and now we need two hundred thousand dollars a year to maintain it. I think it needs to be all part of the life cycle cost of this idea. Um, to vote on it, I want to know. Yep, that's a great point. Thank and you. Also, fundraising. Um, the conservation commission has been really excited, and pretty successful at doing a lot of conservation because thanks to John Wallace's great um, work at getting um, um, uh, uh, grants and whatnot, so we can leverage our conservation funds and do more by doing that. So we can, you know, we can, you know space out our money and do more. So. Um, I, I recommend you raise that your goal of your fundraising team as you're doing right now. I, I think um, I don't know what's supposed to go out there, but I, I'd say you should decide to try to have that. You know, if you can't, if you're out of home, go for it. That's know. certainly our goal, yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's the reason. Thank, yeah. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Next question, please. Please, two quick questions. First question being the figure you gave of four, four, six, or whatever it was you threw up there, is that the cost at the end of the bond and after everything is paid for? So, correct, this is the, the warrant article that we would bring, and then that would be the burden on the taxpayers, which roughly would be the cup of coffee per okay. week. And so that cup of coffee is, not roughly, but what did you guys figure? Three dollars. Three dollars a week. Three dollars a week per household? Okay. On a 300,000 value. Sorry. Yep. Did that include interest on the bond? That was my... That did include interest on the bond, correct. So that's not the we bond. estimated three percent. For this estimate, we were working with Peter. Can I make a clarifying point? On oh, that? please do. Absolutely. Um, the three dollars a week translates into one hundred and thirty-eight dollars a year, plus change. Extrapolated out over fifteen years is two thousand dollars per three hundred thousand dollar house for a brand new property. Okay. So the overall fifteen-year burden is about two thousand dollars. Thank you, Tracy. Appreciate right, it. Thank, thank you. you very much. Moving on, we have the planning board, please. Can, can we move the podium back into the field of uh, camera range? I'm the current chair of the planning board. Um, our board consists of seven seats. Uh, six, sorry. Um, we only have five filled right now, so we're looking for members as well. We have no alternates. Um, the role of the planning board uh, simply is to provide orderly growth and development in Barrington. To that end, we are tasked with preparing and adopting a master plan which establishes a vision for the future and identifies the steps to achieve that vision. It's used as a guide to develop <clears throat> for development in the municipality. We're also tasked with creating the capital improvements program that should re reflect funding to accomplish those goals. It's also used to aid the select members <coughs> uh, during consideration of the annual budget. It's just advisory. There's no, uh, obviously, there's no uh, teeth behind it. Um, we are also tasked with adopting and enacting regulations governing the subdivision of land and recommending new and, and amendments to existing zoning ordinances to accomplish the vision of the master plan. Currently at work, we are working to update the ec economic development chapter of the master plan and will next look at the facilities and utilities chapter. We are close to adopting the CIP um, and we continue to look at and improve site plan and subdivision regulations to reflect current and future needs as well as offer a professional and judicious process. We have several members on subcommittees. Uh, one John mentioned was looking at the wetland buffer ordinance. That is, and we also have uh, members on the economic development <coughs> committee. And um, that's about it. Any questions? <coughs> questions from the board? Questions for the audience, please. <coughs> your contact information 
for people who might be interested in being on the planning board? Is that available somewhere on the town website? Yep, it is. You can uh, contact the land use office, uh, Marsha, uh, uh, or anyone in the town office. Yeah, the, the applications are online for all of these positions. There's an application, so if you just go to the website, you can find it. It's the same application for all boards, you just specify. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you. Hey, Lisa Alice, please, the Recreation Commission. So, Lisa, she has no voice. Um, I just... Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Ready to hear <laughs> All right. Um, I'm Tara Barker. I'm the town's recreation director, and we currently have, or the rec commission has, um, five current members on their board which makes us a full board and we have two alternate seats that are available so we are looking for alternates um, just to introduce our board we have um, Jim Noble um, he has been on the board approximately 14 years Lisa Alice in the red sweatshirt um, she has been on the board for 15 years Jill Hilfiger, who could not make it tonight, has been on the board four years. Steve Graves has been on the board for one year. And Dennis Howe has been on the board for one month. So we have a variety of experience, which is great. And I know over the years I've been, think I've been so thankful to have that. Um, just to give you a quick overview, um, our mission statement is to bring Barrington together and serve as a positive presence in the community, enhancing the quality of life by providing diverse and equitable programming that fosters a sense of community, personal growth, health, fitness, relaxation, good sportsman and good sportsmanship, while providing opportunities for community involvement. Um, with that, just we're, I'm not going to get into like the revolving fund and the operating budget. Everybody's aware or should be aware at this point that we have a revolving fund and an operating budget. The revolving fund is where programming fees, um, so if you sign up for a basketball program, an adult fitness program, those programming fees go into the revolving fund and those are used to cover all expenses, um, including staff, health benefits, um, <coughs> seasonal staff members. We do have two year-round positions that come out of that fund as well. The operating budget is um, funded by the tax payers, um, and um, hopefully we will be continued to be supported through that. Okay, so as far as the recreation department and commission and planning for the future, um, the Rec Commission in the department is in a position where we can really start to plan for the future facilities it, for the town of Barrington, um, whether it be the town gym or you know, upkeep of the office or playground, um, all, those ex all those things that everybody likes to recreate on and within. Um, in 2014, the Rec Commission uh, motioned to put a building blocks program together. Um, and with that, the, the programming fees that sit within the revolving fund, uh, at the end of the year, once all expenses are paid, those gross revenues are then put into the building blocks program and allocated to specific programs, sorry, not programs, facilities uh, that they would like to see upkept or maintained or replaced. Um, that being said, we are uh, going to be replacing the town playground this year. It is definitely a needed, it definitely needs to happen. <laughs> the, the structure we have has been wonderful for the last 12 or 13 years. Unfortunately, um, with New England weather, the wood is not holding up that great. Our insurance company is suggesting that. 
um, the Rec Commission has saved diligently over the last eight years to make sure that the replacement of that playground does not become a burden to the taxpayer. Um, we have decided on a company and um, the, the playground is going to, the replacement and the site work is going to cost somewhere between $140,000 and $160,000. The Rec Commission has saved through the last eight years to make sure, again, that that is not coming from the taxpayers and that is going to be funded through the revolving fund. Um, another big project that is on our list um, to get done this year is a needs assessment and strategic plan for the department. Um, we have uh, gone through the bidding process and we have chosen a company to um, put that in motion for us. We are currently working with Greenplay and our first community get together and discussion on the needs assessment strategic plan will be on May 22nd and 23rd. Uh, you will be seeing um, lots of advertisement and lots of invitations going up in the next week. <laughs> um, Oh, the anticipated, just to back up to the playground, the anticipated installation date uh, will be somewhere around mid-June. Uh, we're, we're hitting to st start that project, or at least end that project before summer camp begins. So our, our deadline is June 15th. Uh, the Rec Commission, um, wanted to take the time to thank the select board for supporting those two projects. Um, those are very important for our community. Um, as you know, those, the playground is the heart of, of the Ramsdale Lane area at this point. Um, and a lot of community members currently use that and will we'll thoroughly enjoy that new, new equipment. So thank you. We appreciate that, what you're doing, so thank you. Question from the board? Question from the audience? Yes, please. Will you be retaining any of the original bricks or fencing with, from the playground build in 2005? Yes, actually. Um, we will, we had a meeting, the Rec Commission had a meeting last month and they had discussed thoroughly about honoring those who were involved in that build. So I believe you will see something be done with those bricks as well as the fencing. Yep. What is the building block for it? It is a, it's a program, um, it's a savings program. Oh. So it's within the revolving fund, so that's where your pro the programming fees sit. You pay for basketball, the $5 <coughs> admin charge, we try to put that away for you know, basketballs or you know, resurfacing of the basketball court inside the town gym. Um, those funds are earmarked within the buildings block, building blocks program so that we can properly save to do those projects. Any other questions? Tara, thank you very much for a great presentation. Moving on, we go to the, uh, Suzanne from the Supervisor Checklist. Uh, the only thing I want to mention is um, supervisors of the checklist are the keepers of the voter checklist. Um, we register people to vote, add the names, do corrections, um, keep track of changes in party, and um, help out at, at the election. We have two elections uh, coming up, a primary and an election in November. And with a primary, you want to double check that you're registered the way you want to be registered to vote. Um, because because of the primary is coming up. And I think through the town clerk's um, website, you can actually go online and find out how you registered. With going back and forth from undeclared to um, Democrat, Republican. So the primary is in September. When was the last time they can change their registration? Uh, it's probably early. It's probably sometime in, in uh, August, July or August. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. It's just a reminder. <coughs> Question from the board, Dan? Uh, can we 
questions from the audience of Suzanne? Seeing that we'll move on. Go to the trustee of the trust funds, Pat Jowich. Zoning Board of Adjustment, Karen Forbes. I'm the last presenter tonight for the board. Um, I've been the chair of the Zoning Board of Adjustment for probably 10 to 15 years. I've, she says more than that. Um, I've been on it for, I think, 25, 26 years. Um, we have five members on our board by statute. Uh, we're, we're limited to five. Right now we have a full board. We have one alternative. Uh, unlike a lot of the boards and commissions, we don't build trails, we don't advise the selectmen, we uh, don't do anything with recreation, and we certainly don't do anything with the library. We have a very, very limited scope. Uh, we sit as a quasi-judiciary board. We uh, hear appeals from administrative decisions on the zoning code, uh, which are if you disagree with the decision made by the code enforcement officer in ruling on the zoning code, or if you disagree with a decision made by the planning board, your appeal is to us. Uh, so all we're doing in that phase is interpreting the zoning and court board. Uh, we also hear requests for variance, uh, special exception, and equitable waivers, which we actually haven't had an equitable waiver request in five years. Yeah, a long, long time. Years, so. uh, I also like to think we have the shortest meetings. Um, so because we sit as a quasi-judiciary board, um, again, it's very limited in our scope. That's it. Questions from the board? Questions from the audience? Thank you very much, Karen. I was reminded that I was uh, remiss at the beginning of uh, notifying everybody uh, as to uh, what boards our board member sits on. Tracy sits on the uh, Recreation Commission. Andy sits on the Planning Board. Dan sits on the uh, Conservation. Conservation Commission. Thank you very much. And Mrs. Hatch is on the ZBA. Myself, I'm on the ABC and the Library. So I apologize to my board fellow, fellow members for not bringing that up sooner. The next one coming up here is the upcoming dates. Uh, for the Board of Selectmen will have their meetings. Like I said, we meet at 6.30 p.m., Early Childhood uh, Learning Center, and we meet at uh, 6.30. And our next meeting coming up for May is the 14th and the 21st, uh, followed on through uh, Christmas. These are posted online. If you have any questions, we'll be able to handle it. Just, just a reminder that if you do need to uh, come before us for any reason, please call Suzanne or uh, John and asked him to put you down as an appointee for the uh, agenda, and we'll go from there. Any any, any questions, Dan? Are you going to address the town manager board? Right? No, I am not. Um, I, 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 the chair is the uh, you asked him to come. Okay, I will do that then. What I should have done in the conservation commission was ask for the land uh, change board to provide speak. So if that uh, individual is here, uh, Dan, would you want to introduce him, please? Huh? Oh, Brian Lindsay. Yeah, this is Jim. Oh, okay, thank you very much, Brian. I'm sorry. Yeah, he has a need. My name is Brian Lindsay. Um, we're, not, we're just getting started with this. We have some people who are interested in uh, being on this. I guess the title is Town Land Use Committee, and that's open to, to change if uh, people don't like that title. But it's um, it was really a uh, an idea that. Uh, that we look at the uh, there's a printout sheet, that, uh, an Excel sheet that the uh, assessors have. It gives the status of all the land that the town that the town owns, and that can be land that the town owns, but only under the uh, provision there's a uh, the RSA that governs it. When people aren't paying their taxes, they've got a three-year window to get up to speed on their payments, and then there's another three-year period beyond that. I, I know I'm, I'm being very basic here, but. So there's a whole, there's a couple of pages of properties that are in that three-year or, or six-year hold before the town can definitely say it's their property. 
and a lot of those are uh, campsites or uh, housing sites up on Berry River and Long Pond and everything that uh, they're quarter acre lots and everything. So a lot of those don't have, even if the town were to acquire them, they don't have a lot of value. Some of them, the town doesn't want to acquire them because there's some problems with uh, cleaning up the, uh, the land. So the, we, the town has gone through a lot of that in the past and probably some of that will continue. But um, I think one of the things to look at, and I think the town made a good move when the, the Liberty, where Liberty Trucks is, the deal was made for them to go in there to, to have that blasted out, make usable property in both the town and Liberty, and the, the developers benefited on that one, and there's more going on. But looking at those types of programs, I think what our committee would do, this town, town land use committee, would look at some of the opportunities for some of that type of stuff and to help maybe, and strictly be strictly an advisory board uh, or advisory committee that could possibly help the planning board and the Conservation Commission with things, with studying some of the, the aspects of the land that they own. We have two engineers, two uh, foresters, a uh, landowner with a sizable uh, conservation easement property in Barrington, and a logger that would be part of the, uh, the committee. But uh, I, I, we just roughed out a, uh, a mission statement to, we're trying to get a handle on what, what is expected of us and what should we do, but I, I'm just, this is just a, a draft. The committee will examine status and use as well as potential uses of town-owned properties and provide advisory, advisory input to the select board and other town boards and committees regarding possible improvements to condition, value, or use of the properties. The committee intends close interface with numerous departments and agencies at the town, county, state, and federal levels in order to provide worthwhile, worthwhile advice. That's kind of what we're looking at, but we're open to any suggestions, any and all suggestions. Brian, would you make sure a copy of that gets to Suzanne, please? Yes, sir. Suzanne, would you please put it on? It, it's a draft. It's we're, we're, yeah. yeah, but uh, it'll be way worse to try out, but yeah. something to start. Appreciate it. Dan? Uh, the board did that mission statement. He wants feedback from the other selectmen on it, to what they, their vision is of this board. We will, we will, we're going to do that on the 14th. Okay. Is that okay? Thank you, Brian. Now we're now we're at the section where does any of the uh, departments have, have any comments uh, concerning the meeting we just had? Anybody want to make a comment on anything? Just thank everybody for coming. It's a good group that we really did well with. Yeah, we had a great show. Please. Yes, I, and I just like to uh, thank Marcia Gassis for the work that she's been putting in supporting the board on this uh, capital improvement. She's She's really worked hard to try to put this together. Thank you for your comments. Appreciate it. Does anybody else have any comments, please? Thank you very much. Board, I'd like to request a five minute recess. Anybody disapprove? Saying none, the motion carries on a five minute recess. Again, thanks, everyone. The agenda is the uh, Royal Tanner's request of modification of Island Oak Bridge discussion. Uh, the question was asked, are they moving the crown too? And yes, that's why they want to do it, because they're going to move it, uh, move the crown so they'd be uh, the, uh, the narrow shoulder, the 10 foot, the 10 foot, and then the wide shoulder. And this would give you a wider shoulder from 3 feet to 5 feet. And the 10 feet would have the purpose of traffic calming. And the question is, does the board approve that adjustment? Discussion for the board, please. Starting with the other end, Andy. I'm sorry. <laughs> the other end. Dan? No, I didn't stay in that principal's office. Okay, Tracy? I didn't understand it. So we're, we're making the road less wide in order to accommodate a sidewalk. Is that what I'm getting out of this? You, you're making the road less wide. The travel lane's less wide to create more space for pedestrians and bicycles. Okay. Like so between the lines and the narrow yeah. lines, it'll slow traffic down yeah. subconsciously. <laughs> Well, what is it now? I guess what's it's the width of it now. It doesn't slow it down. Yeah, what's the width of it now? Because I need to understand, because I walk this road all the time, so someone help me. Hey, Peter, how wide is Malibu Road? I believe it's 18 feet. So it's 9 and 9? Yeah. 
So right now, so this would add two feet and then another five feet for walking and biking. It would add one foot with the proposal and then five feet for walking. Right. Okay. One foot. One foot should be twenty. Can I ask the expert? What do you think? Peter, it's can, Peter. You, can you help us out, Pete? <laughs> Basically, what it does is just the road. The road stays the same width. Yeah. It just where the cars travel. In front of the camera, Peter. It's going to be ten okay. instead of eleven. Okay. And uh, eleven. Yeah, 10 instead of 11, and then the, the walkway, the actual walkway will be wider. And how does the walkway get designated? It's not a raised sidewalk. No, it's just going to be so a you're just gonna line. Have a white it's going to be a line in the road. It's just going to be lines in the road, just like we have now. You'll have a double yellow. You'll have your two white lines, and on one side it will be five feet. On one side it will probably be a foot. From a maintenance standpoint, why would you things like that? It'll, it allows... Peter and his crew to keep <coughs> uh, actually did like a raised sidewalk right, thing. Perfect. You got it. It's okay. another management okay. issue. Okay. So that was my only question. Is that in the future if anybody has a uh, electric vehicle for being special needs, at least they'll have the room to travel on the road a lot safer than what we had before. That's true. Any other questions? We have a motion. I, I was just oh, please, please go ahead. Point Sorry. out that this also aligns with the master plan, and that if you look at the master plan, it talks about expanding the bridge width so that they are we are a pedestrian and recreational facility supported town. Um, and also, just in case anyone doesn't know, I did ask John about shifting the pitch on the road so it aligned with um, the new crown or changing the crown. And Placement of the crowd in the room, and he said they were quite handy. Any further discussion? Do I have a motion, please, from someone? I'll make a motion. Tracy's made the motion. I'll second it. Second by Andy. Vote. Oh, Dan? There I. Half I. Half I. Motion carries. Thank you. And next. Next item, uh, does the board approve the RFP for paving? Now, Dan had brought up an additional alternate that he, an, an alternate, there are no alternates in it right now, which would read, uh, quote, the additional per square yard cost over and above the reclaim and find grade price to reclaim and add six inches of one and a half inch stone and mix to a depth of six additional inches below the added six inches in fine grade. This will not be a factor in the basis of the award. And I'll let Dan speak to that. I brought it up multiple times. It's a McAdam theory. And right now, the state is doing more of it. And then I got a call from the state on a job up north. And then on private jobs, they're doing more of it. So this is just the options. We have a tool for data for future jobs and stuff. We don't have to do it on this job. I don't expect that to be on these jobs. But it's an extra tool for you know. Um, then I'm of the opinion that I was asked to do the RFP or RFQ. I did that the way I was asked. I don't believe that we need to have that alternative on there. And I don't believe you can compare the town roads to state roads. I'm sorry. Further discussion? Um, can I answer that question? Certainly, go ahead. I'm not asked to, this is new technology with PETA. You've been practicing it already by introducing the three-inch stone to the wet roads, and then last year you introduced three-point of gravel to the roads. So I'm not reinventing the wheel. It's common practice. And all I'm asking is for options to blend so you can use it for future use on other roads and bring our roads up to better standards. And you can ask any engineer to sign of the times. Who's that? <coughs> That's exactly right. All we're doing is having it put on there to give us a price in case we need to use it. And uh, right now, as we had in discussions, if there isn't a use for it right now, at least as Dan pointed out, it's, it's a good idea to have it there. So if we do need it, we have it. If we don't have it, we just have another year to go. That's it. Is that, is that good, Andy? Yeah. Dan? We spent all this money on a study. We're following somewhat of it. Now, this is not going to cost us anything. I'm not asking, 
the board to do it. This is a free tool. It's not cost anything. We love data from the private vendors. What it's going to cost us. So we want to introduce it later on. We could. So Peter will have the tools and numbers to introduce it at no cost to the town. Any other further questions? Tracy, please. Have you seen this before, John, on the RFPs for paving? Alternates are not uncommon on construction projects. Okay. Usually, though, if you put an alternate in, there's an intent that you're going to do the alternate. In this case, there's no intent to do the alternate. It's just to get a price. So. It's for data gathering. I just for data that. gathering. Okay. So, so you've that's seen a little unusual. It's unusual just for data gathering. Yeah. Okay. But it's alternates are not that un unusual. Okay. But also, but also to speak to that, it also gives us an opportunity. When we start to prepare our budget in a couple of months, at least we'll know what it is, and it can, and it can turn around and not only assist us, but will assist Peter on some of the roads if that was a necessary evil he had to put on the road. Okay. Yeah. So the consensus of the board is to add that. Is there a motion to approve the RFP with the alternate added? Motion to approve the RFP with the alternate Yeah, the measurements are in it. Oh. Quantities. 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 Well. Quantities. If you look, if you look on uh, page uh, six, I'm still struggling with the with the RFP because typically when we do an RFP, we put it out for this oh, is the road, okay. this is the section, this is the width, this is the. But that makes it awful hard to compare the quote one to another. So what we're doing here is we're doing it. it this is not unusual to estimate the quantities and have them bid the quantities, and that's how you get a uh, comparable price. Because what's happened in the past, and the reason there's been debate on past RFPs, is different people go different widths on different roads, and this makes it much easier to compare the price. You're going to have four numbers, you add them together, and that's the low bid. I would make a motion to accept with the changes that were introduced to um, have an addendum for data gathering. I have a motion. I have a second. I'll second it. Second. I have a vote. There I. Article by. Can't carry. Bailey I. Motion carries. Thank you very much. John, next item. Um, yeah. Or my concern was. Public Works request permission to host stuff a truck food drive to help 68 hours of hunger, which is a program to feed kids on weekends when they're not provided with uh, meals at school. Uh, it's going to be part of Public Works Week, May 22nd and 26th, when the transfer station is being opened. Um, and the question is, does the board approve doing this? I'll make a motion approve it. We have a motion to approve. I'd second it. Have a second discussion? I, I had a discussion. Is it staffed with volunteers that day, and would you like volunteers that day? Everything stays in there. The food stays in there. Yeah. That's actually two days. Tuesday and Saturday. I'll be doing it myself. Okay. And do you want volunteers to be there with you? If they want to be. Okay. I mean, I, I've talked to the school, and then she said she might have a few people. Okay. Um, Great. Peter, what hours are you going to be there? I believe it was 8 to 5. 8 to 5 on both days? No, the other one was Saturday still too, right? <coughs> but what do you Peter? Excuse me, it's one that comes on Tuesday 1 to 5, Saturday 8 to 5. Yeah. It says here 8 to 2. Maybe it's because she couldn't get volunteers. You'll yeah. be open 8 to 5. You'll still take it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, you're looking at uh, the 22nd. Yeah. 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 I believe it was set up so we could do it when the transfer station was open. And it was open on Tuesdays yeah. from, from 1 to 5, and it was open Saturdays from 8 to 5. Yeah. Yeah. So we're 
Okay. Any further discussion on this? Seeing that, we'll take a vote. Dan? Aye. Article aye. Hatch aye. 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 Uh, the next item has to do with the ambulance. Uh, Rick hasn't finished with the RFP, but hopes to finish with it soon. Uh, I believe that what the board agreed to last time was that he will send it to the board and the board will have a few days to comment and if they don't object, then he'll send it out. Is that the comments from the board? I think the agreement that we had was that none of us are equipped with the knowledge base to read the 70 pages and truly yeah. understand what is needed. So, well, as long as it's right and good times, it's all kind of left. Well, I think the uh, key pages for the board, the, the key pages for the board to read are they actually the first couple of pages where we have the selection criteria and some of those factors that will enter into. Um, uh, you know, uh, whether or not you're going, where cost will be a factor, but not the only factor, to make that clear to those who are bidding. And that's something for the board to, and if the board has uh, too many comments, we can wait and do it the next meeting, but we've been having, continue to have trouble with that ambulance. We didn't start at the hospital the other day. It's still in the garage. So the one from Milton now. Yeah, we're using the Milton's all the time now. Um, and that's all I have. Maybe for the West sure. the board that, um, and just that the board agrees that anything that we're asked to vote on be on our agenda and not right. run through the uh, administrator's report. And we, we we covered that uh, we covered that last meeting. We said that uh, all appointments had to be in by Wednesday so we could have it Wednesday before the meeting, and all the other items on the, on there was ending at noon on Wednesday, and if they weren't in by then, so we could have the material, I said that we weren't going to have it, so it's okay. just a matter of getting that up to stuff and working on that, and so yeah. that, that, that's what we're going to do. The only thing that wasn't on the agenda that I covered was that on the ambulance, and I was just clarifying that the board had talked about it, I wanted to make sure I understood correctly. The right. chairman, it's just where, where we, I just want to make sure that anything where you're asking for more approval really should be on the end of the agenda. Dan, you have a question? I second that, and then plus two, I want to make a motion. If we would identify us and we raise our hands, I'm getting sick of people who make comments. I'd be the only one to raise my hand. Well, maybe the only one that has a comment. No, I will allow the comment. I raise my hand, I'm the only one. And John. So I want to make a motion to be addressed by the chair. We raise our hands. I'm still back at the motion. Mm -hmm. for the, what was the motion from? I'll raise my hand to be addressed by the board. Oh, okay. That's not the I would certainly think that should be the chairman's discretion, but it's up to the board. Yeah, we'll take care of it. Okay, I'm still trying to figure out how come on Mrs. Hatch and everybody else has got the first name. <laughs> I know I'm old, but I'm not sure. Oh. On the marathon? Yes, I don't know whether that's my... Any other, any other uh, business to be brought? I have one item. Please, go ahead. Um, and I'm hoping maybe Marcia can help me out because I'm, I'm slightly fogged over here. Uh, one of the things we talked about at the planning board meeting that we were going to talk about this coming week was there was a note around, I had a note on the economic, economic development committee. Did we need the board to... Um, help us with like getting okaying an economic development committee or starting one or uh, there was something we had talked about as a planning board and I'm trying to remember exactly how we worded it. So that was one of the proposed recommendations in the economic development master plan, but you'd actually we need to have the public hearing and adopt right. it and yeah. then and then it would be the here. implementation. Okay. I just I couldn't remember the sequence on it and I didn't want to miss something that I was supposed to bring up before tomorrow. No, but thank you for remembering. Any other comments? I'll entertain a motion for dismissal. I'll make a motion to adjourn. One second, if I could. Um, did we or did we not vote that the RFP for the ambulance can go out? We know they I thought it was a consensus. It was a consensus for the last meeting for us to go up. We wanted to yeah, view it before we sent it up. That was that was the exception to it. Do you want to vote? 
I apologize. I was, uh, I thought I was going to get it done at about seven pages long, and I'm about three quarters of the way through it. Uh, and I talked to John today, and uh, he reminded me that it would be a really good idea to get my uh, cover letter and stuff done that, that you folks would likely be <coughs> more interested in that aspect of it than, than, than necessarily not the most of what's going to fit where on the thing. So, what I'm proposing to do is, um, I'll, uh, with my one finger typing, I'll get this thing finished up and I'll get it out to you folks with a uh, reasonable time frame for you folks to look at it. And if there's no issues with it, then we're asked to be able to just send it out. If there, if anybody has any questions, then my intention would be is that we'll just hold on to it until the 14th and you, you folks can take a uh, full hold over on uh, the thing. So I'm not. I am I'm not going to put any rush on anybody, and I don't expect anybody to even remotely look at 70 pages and say, yeah, go ahead and do that. Thank you. Thank you. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Anybody opposed? May 14th. Anybody opposed? Anybody opposed? Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you everybody for coming, staying so long, and making it an extra month. I appreciate it.